Oh, oh fuck you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Hi. Boing. Hello. We're here. We're back. Unfortunately. I mean, you're, they're the ones that clicked on this video, so they're probably just like, oh boy. They're talking yeah. about something else. Welcome back to the Dark Souls of Podcast, everybody, where it's the hardest podcast to ever listen to. That's right. I'm James. And I am... Um, James. Not James. Not James. <laughs> I'm like, what's my name again? Uh, so What's my name again? Where is my friend? I can't say that. It's probably not going to fly in 2020. What friend? Yeah. How dare you call him their friend? They uh, have consent. Yeah. Uh, so we got a yeah, comment. Yeah, what the fuck are we talking about? We got a comment. Oh. On one of our podcasts. No way. Yeah. And it, <laughs> please, be, please let it be like the fuck are these dipshits talking no, about? No, no. So it's the episode where we talked about Yellow Submarine and Twin Peaks, and uh, the user I I didn't go to their page, but it doesn't look like they're that legit. Um, I'll I'll show you. I'll give you a little glimpse. Okay. Uh, and if anyone else is wondering, they can just go to the page. Yeah, this is an interesting. And actually, opening. it says uh subscriber for sex videos oh, oh yeah okay oh. but but the comment was actually relevant to the video <laughs> so what if it's a um uh, what if it's a troll account like something that commends like it would do hang on so there's a timestamp. it's like 232 i like that and then a bunch of uh like smiles and hearts and kisses and all this stuff so I went to that timestamp and just just wait wait a second. <clears throat> one, one, just 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 a second. Okay, it's getting there. All right, here. We were like halfway through it already before I we we even said like ah oh, we're gonna. Did you hear it? I said wee wee. I said wee wee. <laughs> <laughs> it it was an audio glitch. You can hear it's wee wee here. Twin Peaks. We were like yeah we were like halfway through it already before I we we even said like. Oh, <laughs> so they commented that timestamp and said I like that with a bunch of kissies. What the fuck? They like wee wee. Yeah, no, I know. And they watched long enough to leave yeah, a that's comment. What I mean, like how would you watch that long enough to like that's so weird. Yeah, it was just As, It was just fuck? two and a half minutes. Like they didn't get that far, but like I'm surprised they cared. Dude, if it was forty it was like forty six minutes or something, I would have lost it. Right, and then, like, what the? F- why? I like that. Like, who are you? <laughs> That's like the best comment to leave, though. Honestly, I know, right? Because I'm just like, I've got like so many emotions in me. <laughs> just like, how am I supposed to take that? That's what I'm saying. I wanted to let you know, uh, right here in front of well, everyone. I'm glad they watched uh, two and a half minutes. Yeah, they did. So um, I'm proud. Yeah, and I just wanted to get that out of the way. I'm honored that they spent two minutes of their lives listening to how much you like Wee Wee. <laughs> Thank you. Me how too. did that glitch even happen? I don't know. I, I'm now I'm wondering if the audio is doing that a lot. I oh. hope not. <laughs> I don't check that yeah, shit. Your, your audio software is just like, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if we made him say Wee Wee? Wee Wee. Wee Wee. Or maybe it was a, an exporting glitch. Like I, I don't know how it happened. It's usually like a clock time thing. So Yeah. So hopefully it's not happening constantly. Yeah. But Anyway, or it might be a watchdog thing. <laughs> Ugh, gross. Anyway, what are we talking about? That was an interesting intro. Yeah. Well, I like I like I like when there's a little something to get into it. It's just we haven't been doing it. Yeah, cause... no, I appreciate that there was something here. Yeah. Um, because the rest of this episode is gonna be fucking bonkers. Is it bonkers? No. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we've really got so? we've got a. Uh, a movie and an album today. We're not just a movie podcast. We're finally mixing it up a bit, but it's probably going to go back to being just movies. No, I, I've actually got a healthy mix, at least in the coming like month. So, Well, I like to think I'm working on a, a nice mix, but I'm going to be buying myself some time. Cool. As, some, as foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Stick around to the end, I guess, for... Oh, okay. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Well, it's actually the uh, my recommendation first this week. Okay, cool. Which well, is uh, a movie. Uh, it's a funny movie. Did You watched it, right? Yeah, I watched it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you watched it, right? Oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. We're talking about Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Directed by Edgar Wright. 2004? 
Yeah, 2004. I'm giving you that look because he's a he's a mm, chef's kiss director type. Yeah, the the director um name sounds familiar. Like, what else did he do? I'm gonna look it up. Really he quick. did uh Hot Fuzz, uh Baby Driver, The World's End, mm. uh Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, he does a bunch of shit. Okay, Ant Man. He did Ant Man. He did do Ant Man. That means I gotta watch Ant Man. Yeah, he pro- he didn't really get to do much with it. I'm guessing. I haven't seen Ant Man, but just knowing how Marvel movies go, I'm assuming it was like you know Marvel standard. Probably you- better because it's Edgar Wright. Um, there's not a whole hell of a lot here, so that's interesting. He's he's got a style to him. Uh, but yes, and starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, I think that's his name. There's actually a trilogy of movies starring those two and also, and directed by Edgar Wright and they're all great. I mean, I've seen two of three of them. I think I um yeah, I think I got like Mandela or something because I also thought this movie was spelled Sean like S H A W N. Yeah. Instead of U N so or, or S E A N. <laughs> that would be a little S-E-A-N. weird. Yeah. Um so I probably have more to say about this than I do my own recommendation, which is kinda funny. You know what? It should have been I find it kinda sad. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it should have been. I like that. <laughs> it should have been S H A W N, right? Because then it would actually kind of mirror Dawn of the Dead a little better. Yeah, but like, they, it, I mean, they they already like knew what they're going for with the rhyme with Dawn and Sean. Yeah, one out of ten. You're right. All right, yours. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what even? <laughs> uh, so what'd you think? Um. Right, I was just about to jump into it already. Um, so yeah, so I've seen this movie before, like I said okay. in the last pod. Um, actually, not until not all the way through to the end. I seen it like managed to see it twice, like the first half. Okay. Um, so never fully to the end. Um, and I like it still the same. Like it doesn't change. Mm-hmm. It doesn't change what how I felt about it before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like this movie, like I've always like kind of just seen like around you know like you hear it it's kind of like you know the folklore mm-hmm. like just like scott pilgrim yeah it's just like kind of always there and like I, to be honest like early on i was kind of like like back in those days i was more turned off to the sound of that movie this movie yeah because okay. it's kind of like advertised it's like a oh it's a parody on like, on zombies yeah on zombie apocalypse and immediately my my brain goes to like another scary movie, movie another movie that's like that's that star no it stars um Scott Pilgrim in it oh we really? got that place Michael Sarah yeah him what oh, a movie wait, there's another movie what the there's fuck a zombie movie with my oh this is the end is it is that it yes yes with Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill and uh who the fuck Danny McBride and Craig Robinson. And I'm missing someone. But that whole crowd, the whole no, like Judd you're Apatow. mistaken. Uh, that's another one. Fuck, I don't, I don't know remember what you're it. Of. They were at like this. Uh, it, it, it like ends with the the Ferris wheel and shit, and it's like this girl with too much mascara on, like really 2008 vibes. Are you talking about Juno? Juno. Wait, 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 wait. Are you are you saying there's a movie with like the that parodies that's it, that's not about zombies. Juno is not about zombies. Okay, but if you're saying it's about zombies, I have no idea. What's that what actor's name? About. Really quick, Michael Cera, C E R A. This is a tangent immediately. Oh yeah, I know, but I need to like, so that way at least you know. Um, son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't fucking. I didn't know he was in a zombie movie. Well, it's like another parody type of thing. Um, and you sure it's what him? Is it? Yeah, hmm. it's a, like it's him, him. I don't know. If I can't find it here, I'm just gonna but give up. Let me just say he's in Twin Peaks. What? Oh yeah, season three. What the fuck? Don't look at stuff. I did. Oh, I'm looking through his fucking. Yeah, what he, he started. Yeah, he's in Twin Peaks. <laughs> you did not warn me about that. No. Why? Why is the Facebook kid in Twin Peaks? <laughs> you better not replace Cooper. <laughs> oh, oh, just kidding. I'm fucking with you. Okay, good. We should talk about this movie though. Um, yeah, we should. I can't fucking see it. You know, it might be This Is The End. Whatever. My first, just, there's he, others, he's in This Is The End. There's yeah. other parodies that exist um, that poke fun at Zombie Apocalypse. And, like, I've seen that movie all the way through. And, you know, if I can ever find it, 
Mm-hmm. Just four out of four out of ten at, on Letterboxd. Okay. Um, not, I'm not really a big fan of it. Um, and what I'm trying to get at is Shaun of the Dead is done really, really well. Oh, okay. Like, I honestly thought you, even from when I recommended it last week, I felt like you like gave me a meh. Well, it's kind of what it was, you know, after seeing just like the first. I half felt like you were like, just opening. like, oh, I, I've I've seen it. That's kind of like that the act. I, that's kind of like the kind of the taste that was in my mouth after like kind of seeing it. I mean, what's his face is really I don't know actors. Simon names. Pegg. Simon Pegg is really great. Sean. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, I love him. He, he's he's like such perfect casting for this. I know. Right. Um. Yeah. So and and also his buddy. Just I mean, it's all pretty good casting. I mean. Other than Simon Pegg, everyone else is kind of just like a blur. The, you know, they're like, I don't see them anywhere else. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like Simon and, and Nick but Frost. Like they do pretty well. Yeah, his best friend Ed. Ed, they're both great. Uh, I'm sure. I like, I think everyone in the movie definitely is good. I, but I, I think they're I not know, in the spotlight. I think I know the difference. Um, <laughs> and that is like the parody that I seen before. It was all just like archetypes. Right, you know, those type of characters, just like in Cube, um, right? You know, and then just it's just like th- the scenario itself is supposed to be the parody, <laughs> as opposed to how the characters react to it, and actually having pretty nuanced characters, right? And that's here. You know what? Like, I w- the characters are actually really well written. Yeah, like, really good. And, like, I actually, actually, sorry, I want to say the good. same thing though, uh, because I used to see this movie on. It was like on Comedy Central like every week. So I just assumed it was like disaster movie or epic movie or yeah, scary movie. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, but so I just kind of like, eh, whenever I saw it on, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, and like that other places are like zombies. Isn't that fucking funny? Like, isn't this scenario funny? Mm-hmm. Like, that's kind of like, that's exactly like the tone of voice I think the movie is saying to me like movies like you just named yeah and that one like and it's just like oh he's got a girlfriend isn't that like really like cool like it's just like yeah you know that's what i thought movies are trying to be but this isn't that at all it's like yeah the the humor comes entirely out of the characters reacting to it um yeah and that's it's just scenario that's what i wrote right at the top is usually parodies in this vein are pretty awful and then i listed those uh, this is truly the masterpiece of its genre and maybe the only good one. <laughs> I would agree because like um, right in the beginning you kind of get like how it's going to convey its humor because like they don't know it's a zombie apocalypse until like a third of the movie is done. Mm-hmm. Like th- third of the way through. Like one of my favorite sh- like parts of the movie is when um is when they do that like that long shot of him walking to the, to the uh, store to the store yeah and at first it shows all these people and just you know kind of that that one part of london and everything and then he goes through it again and it's just like completely empty and there's like that the car windshield that's like destroyed and other people like shuffling through and he's just like oh whatever yeah and the bloody hands on the on the oh yeah on the door yeah and then he he's he's trying to check out with his stuff and he's like Talking to the guy who's usually at the register gets no answer. He's like, ah, whatever. He's like, all right, whatever. I left you 50p. <laughs> yeah. Okay, even when he finds uh, his roommate at home in the shower, he doesn't realize he's a zombie right away. Yeah, he's like, oh, shit, sorry. Well, we're going to go borrow your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's God like they're it. idiots, but like not, ext- not infuriatingly so. Yeah, no. Like, it's- they're likable, but it's just like... And, and that takes like... A lot. That's fuck. That's really it's underrated how um how well that's written because it's really easy to make them too stupid. Yeah. Like you know the the later seasons of SpongeBob Patrick stupid. Flanderizing them. Yes. Yeah, flanderizing. That's right. I forgot that was a term for that. Um, I mean the only character I really felt that was like that was the mom, but I realized like when they were you know in that in the holdout like the, yeah. the end like yeah she's supposed to be dumb <laughs> well this movie uh this is a later note i wrote down but since you're there like it hits all the beats of a zombie story like it hits every beat of a zombie movie which is actually like kind of impressive because 
it makes us seem more like a tribute yeah, to zombie like, movies than just like a cash. Uh, yeah, here's my whole note. Like the humor works because it's timeless. It's not just a bun- bunch of like funny like ha funny reference humor and like or just edge. It's like it's clever absurdity. But like it's also capable of being surprisingly straight like and it plays just like a zombie movie. Like every scene that takes place once they get to the pub has happened in a in a zombie movie. In like every zombie movie. And it kind of shows Edgar Wright's range as a director, especially if you like have seen any of his other movies. But I guess you haven't yet. No, I haven't. You should check out his other stuff after this if you like this. He doesn't make the same movie twice, but he has yeah. some trademarks, which uh, I'm sure you've you'd notice the uh, fast paced editing and uh, the the uh, general direction and cinematography. He likes to do those fast cuts. Yeah, but I usually I just figured like that was part of the uh the mood the movie was setting with like you know mm-hmm. like the part where he's just like okay here's the plan and shoom, you know? yeah I, I wrote down like, especially it, it during that the- for like it's comedic effect and timing really yeah i actually wrote that for especially during the planning scene that's actually kind of one of his trademarks and, yeah like I, I figure like that was what scott pilgrim was too because like you know you see snippets here and there mm-hmm. and like you know just kind of get a feel for like what that is too mm-hmm. um and it's just kind of like a, uh, it gives the mood of being like really lighthearted. Yeah. But what I took out of like, you know, the beats of the, um, the whole zombie movie in progression is that this movie isn't afraid to get serious. No. Which yeah, I not. love that choice. Mm-hmm. And more comedy movies should do that. I agree. That is why, that's why Click is like the, like the, best, the one that, the movie. one that everybody, remembers and likes because it actually has that serious point in it yeah i don't know how much it would hold up if i saw it today but i remember what you mean not that good (laughs) from when i was a kid i remember what you mean because like that was the first time i was watching a like adam sandler movie and i was like (laughs) and then like oh this is sad at the end (laughs) (laughs) oh this is sad (laughs) i just picture 14 year old you doing that it's like oh that's sad that's how yeah that's how i got (laughs) click is how i got addicted to depressing media (laughs) <laughs> uh. okay wait so I wrote or I agree with you uh, about that it, it like endeavors into these other um, emotions and I don't know maybe, I, maybe it's been too long since I've seen a zombie movie but I feel like it does it even better than like a real zombie movie because um Save for maybe The Walking Dead when it was still oh. good. You usually like don't care that much when people die in a zombie I, movie. I, I forgot we never we didn't uh, give a synopsis of this of the movie. Ah, uh, we didn't. But <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of a household movie. Yeah, I don't know how to. You have an everyday fellow named Sean in the UK, and he's trying to get his life together. He's working a dead end job. His girlfriend is not happy with him, and then zombie apocalypse happens. He becomes a hero. At the end. Yeah, that's it. Um, he becomes but a he's hero, still, but, but he's still boyish. He's not like all yeah. of a sudden got like you know, grew just a whole fucking he's landscape not, of chest hair. Yeah, he's not Johnny Bravo. Yeah, he doesn't be turn into that. He's still like you know, really pretty juvenile. <laughs> the whole movie still is like, you know, obviously spoilers at the end when like his best friend dies. Yeah, and like they mirror like the beginning, which is like I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, no, I don't worry about it. Like, no, Sean, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, he fucking farts as he's dying. <laughs> right, and there was another thing. I don't. I and don't... also, this yeah, this movie's not above fart jokes. No, well, it's not above. You know, like it uses all its resources, and it and uh, the comedy hits pretty consistently, in my opinion. I mean, for me, I wasn't like not all of them like made me um you know laugh on the inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this movie actually had me laugh out loud once. Oh yeah, it was, it was um it was the part where there was the whole group that was there, and they were on foot, mm-hmm. and he was like, "It's just over there, all these whole like thirteen fences." And then, <laughs> yeah. And then the dude is just, and then that one like Flanders dude is just like, "You expect us to jump over all of that?" And he's just like, "Wait, you never jumped over a fence before?" And like he just goes for it, but just falls. <laughs> yeah. I, I genuinely wasn't expecting that, so I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." And then he just gets up. He's just like, 
Okay. Like it looked really just kind of it looked almost unscripted. I know. That's so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of the thing I was telling you about in Family Guy when someone just falls too fast. And it's like, yeah, in like two frames. Yeah, it's like the funniest thing Family Guy ever does. It's just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> except so except it wasn't like too quick. No, no. It, was like, it wasn't. But it hit the same way. Like, yeah, like, it, <laughs> funny guy fall over. Well, because <laughs> like you see the thing like falling out, like giving in like, before <laughs> yeah. he hits the floor. So the funny part isn't Oh, he hit the floor. The funny part is like, oh, it's he's gonna, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like you see it happening, I guess. Yeah. Whew. Uh it's pretty fast paced comedy too. I, yeah, I it's said like fast a paced. Like the 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 jokes per minute, if if it's a measurable thing, it's, yeah. it's pretty packed in. I said it's like a Bo Burnham show. It's a series of discrete bits. Like if you look away for a second and it, you it, might miss a joke. It kind of like reflects like you know kind of what hanging out with your bud would be like yeah you know i agree um i said yeah did you have something oh i was just thinking about some other like particular particular scenes i actually like, want- I like when um sean's trying to talk to his to his friend like seriously like about what him and the prick were talking about and he was just like hey um look can you uh, oh top right by the way <laughs> oh yeah He's like, nice shot um <laughs> Keeps getting distracted with like tips. I've got a bunch of those, but I one of my first notes I wrote was like, uh, because <laughs> I I was already writing a quote during the first scene. It was when, uh, she's telling him like she it's like it's Sean and his girlfriend at the like restaurant, and she's like, I just don't think it's working out. It's not. It's not that I don't like Ed. Ed, it's not that I don't like you. Like he's right, oh, yeah, right in the beginning. Yeah, like I started to write that down, and then I was just like, if I write quotes for this, I'm gonna be writing the whole script. <laughs> but I mean, that to me was just like, oh, that's the classic, like, yeah, cartoon style humor. And then and he, he does, this, and Sean does the same thing. Am I wrong? He's like, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. No, but Sean is just like, look, it's not like I don't like. Yeah. Uh, blank and blank. I forgot the names. Yeah. Guys, it's not like I don't like you. And they're just there. Like, yeah no i like that uh but yeah i started to write that and then i I said i'm not gonna write quotes and then i proceeded to write a bunch of quotes anyway but we'll get there i guess in a second um what else did i have i said why is this movie kind of relevant right now there was more than one time in this where i was just thinking about the pandemic happening oh yeah and I was just like, people are being stupid, and well, like, people are being the, stupid the, the in the stupid, movie. The stupid people that are saying, "Oh, it's all bullshit," um, is literally like the, literally like the mom. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, she did have one good moment where it was in in the car, and it was after like that whole emotional thing, um, and then, and then he's just like, pull over, like he's dead, and she's like, no, he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he isn't. No, he isn't. <laughs> Like oh yeah, that. that was a really like powerful scene too, where Sean like starts yelling. At who do you yell at? You yell at Ed to pull over. Oh yeah, yeah. I think like it. I mean, if this was like a a real like, if this wasn't a comedy movie, and uh, they had like the little one minute like or like thirty second confession from the stepdad to the kid who he's like treated wrong his whole life then like if this was like a movie that you're supposed to take more seriously i feel like you'd be like no bad writing well yeah they're I, manipulating me but then like in this it's just like obviously they haven't like developed the character all that much <laughs> but now that you're talking about the dad wait unless you had something to say on this i mean i was just gonna say like not the dad scene specifically but sean like delivering that emotion yeah no i agree I that agree was powerful that. the dad is just he's a prick go die <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean everyone is just kind of like just a bit of a prick <laughs> yeah except for ed and the uh the other girl <laughs> the other girl yeah not the girlfriend um oh okay. not not liz mm-hmm, mm-hmm. liz sucks <laughs> um but she kind of doesn't i don't know yeah and, and they kind of push that ed is a prick <laughs> which is funny because he's great <laughs> but he is yeah a, he's hilarious well he's yeah. like eddie but like dead end eddie yeah um 
what else? I did. Damn, I didn't write too much more before I just started quoting. I said there's a lot of stock sounds, which was kind of funny. I didn't notice. Really? Usually you oh, notice if, that. Kind if of I thing. had to write a note down, it would just be flip phones, lol. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this wasn't a criticism. I just uh, noticed it. Oh, yeah, no, it's just kind of funny to see how that shit kind of ages. I swore I heard the sound of a box breaking in Crash Bandicoot a few times. <laughs> so I was like, damn. Um, and they're, let's see, their pad where the, the table is fucking gross and they play video games. That's us. <laughs> That's a note I took. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything else? Um, Before I go into my quotes. Yeah, go into your quotes. Go for it. I was just kind of letting you go nuts. All right. What do I got? Um, Ed looks a lot like my favorite high school teacher. That's funny. So I might actually need... I'm not going to put his picture in the video, but I feel like I have to show you him just so you can see what I mean because... You just have your high school teacher like on, on Facebook. I, I can't. I can't not see... My high school te- my favorite high school teacher. Whenever I see Ed, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, not a whole lot. Well, okay, I guess you don't know him in person, but if uh, if you knew this guy like I know him, and then you watch, they kind of have the same personality too, except he's not. An that was idiot. like a really like stock image <laughs> that you just showed me. <laughs> yeah, I know because like, it's such it, a weird profile picture. It was. It's actually his picture for his. Uh, for his, what is it, real estate. <laughs> First thing. Real estate. Yeah, he, he stopped being a teacher. But that doesn't have anything to do with Shaun of the Dead. Um, I've got wood t-shirt. Pretty good. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. You noticed that? Yeah. Okay, it sounded like you didn't for a second. No, I noticed that. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. There's that. When uh when when Sean gets a call from his girlfriend right after that <laughs> that call that he was pissed off about, he's like, "Hello, hello, it's me. Hello, <laughs> hello. Oh yeah, he did it both times. <laughs> like, hello. Oh yeah, when he was at work and uh, his uh, Liz called and he was, <laughs> right after he was like, I know how to keep my personal and work life separate. Oh yeah, I call for you. Hi, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. just keeping eye contact. That just small. Like, Hello. 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 That's exactly what it feels like when um you answer the phone and it's like a girl you like. Yeah. And you're with, Hello. And you're with your friends. That's how I. That's how I feel like. I hey, sound. how's it going? It's me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's like uh, such a good delivery too. Mm-hmm. He's like, so good because it's more than just like it's cutesy, but it's just like ah uh, shit. <laughs> he and Edgar Wright wrote this movie, so I thought that was pretty cool. That yeah, is cool. I didn't know that. Um. Let's see. My next quote is just, get fucked, four eyes. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> mostly because uh, I get why he was so pissed at him right there. She's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. Dude, that, that that glasses dude is the most annoying character. <laughs> yeah. But he also gets like the most brutal send off. So it's like. Yeah, he does. It's, it's crazy how brutal this movie got. Yeah, that too. Like, it really works as a zombie movie. I feel like zombie fans, comedy fans, whatever you're a fan of, you can enjoy. Yeah, there's like my a mom whole, like this. There's movie. like a whole lot in here. It's like a Neapolitan ice cream uh, sandwich bar. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my it's like it's it's good for everything. But like, and then part of you is just like, oh, but what if it was like strawberry all the way through? And then you actually get, and then you think about what that would actually be like, and you're like, no, that's not nearly as good. Yeah, it's just uh, it's got it all. Um, and yeah, my mom enjoyed it. We watched three Edgar Wright movies actually while she was here. So that's funny. Cool. Yeah. Um, what is this? Oh, when they were, when they were drunk the the first time there's a zombie, the way they introduced zombies in this too. Yeah. What's he doing? What a tit. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, it's also like. Uh, it was it's what was a good um, uh, obviously like the opening thing where he like gets up and it shows his feet like kind of just like yeah. stumbling uh. forward, he's just yawning. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, there could be like you can honestly interpret some good um commentary. What do you from mean from this movie? Oh yeah, 
um, just about. I think so. Yeah. Zombification and like, especially at the end when like they just turn all these zombies that were once people into entertainment. Yeah, and, like, I think that there definitely is a a commentary if you look for it. Uh, it was, like I'm it's not, I'm, subtle. I'm not, it's not in your face about yeah, it, but it's there. Yeah, I'm 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 not saying he didn't do that on purpose because I don't know if he did or not. But I felt the same way a couple times. I was like, that seems like it's trying to say something. And I believe usually if you find something like that, then like it's there. <laughs> it's uh, usually, there. I think usually, yeah. But we're not gonna get too far into that. No, because also it's kind of like a really similar um, commentary to what the wall does. Yeah, he's part of it, and we've talked about that at length. Yeah. Um. What else do I got? They're all just quotes from here on out, uh, or or just things that happened that I thought was funny. Uh, Ed taking the picture of the zombie. When he, when he was getting attacked. Oh, yeah. He was just like, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, just him being like, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And then after she gets impaled, he starts winding up the camera again. Oh, yeah, just slowly. Just <laughs> 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 oh, good. Uh, and, oh, yeah, this is not particularly. This is like, it's like textbook comedy almost. Mm-hmm. Like, it's textbook. This Here's something that, like, only works in a film. Like, they really made. It's just it's like situationally funny, um, and it's a great scene when they when they start attacking the zombies with with Sean's record collection. Yeah, and they're just go like the zombies oh, yeah, like and they're they're coming closer and they're fiddling through it. Yeah, like, yeah, death is coming at them and they're just like, oh, uh, what about uh Devo? Ah, I want that Batman soundtrack. Throw it, throw it. <laughs> Dire Straits. Throw it. <laughs> so Breakfast funny. Club. Oh, I like it throws it anyway <laughs> oh come on yeah um, that's the first pressing or whatever yeah i think that's that was just a great scene i love that it's situational and it makes fun of people who like vinyls <laughs> yeah well <laughs> yeah i guess so i was gonna say it, it makes fun of certain bands and that uh, too yeah certain like yeah people who collect soundtracks maybe <laughs> or just the batman soundtrack just the batman soundtrack because soundtracks are great Oh, when uh, when he goes back inside, uh, when when they first find out that that there's a zombie apocalypse happening, and uh, and Sean calls his girlfriend, and he's oh, she's engaged because she's like, because <laughs> there's like a hold on the phone, and then uh, yeah, he's just like, oh, she's engaged. That was quick. Oh, I didn't catch that. You didn't catch? Yeah, that's what I mean. There's so much you can miss in this. Because, yeah, someone someone was, you know, the line was that, busy. Yeah, because he was like, oh, she's, she's engaged. And then, like, the phone calls back later. And she's like, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think that's hilarious. Because, yeah, fucking Ed was like, that was quick. Like, she, you know, was going to get married. Um, yeah. Oh, fucking. Th- they played this off twice. When, uh, about his mom. When he called his mom. And uh, he's like, have you been bitten? No, Philip has. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. God. And then fucking, <laughs> then fucking Ed. Has she been bitten? No, Philip has. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, they said Zed. That's always good. Yeah. Don't say the Zed word. Yeah. Zed it's just word. Like, uh, there's zombies out here. Don't say that. <laughs> it, I like that too because it's really dumb that nothing ever calls them zombies or like mm-hmm. infected. Don't say the Z word. Blockers. Don't say the Z. That's pretty much like. Mm-hmm. It's um. What what word is that like? Uh, <laughs> meta. what? It's meta. <laughs> oh, okay. Like it's a meta thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's like almost like the, the movies. It's like being like, wait, we can't. We're a movie. We can't say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. That news report and fucking Ed, when they're driving, Ed turns it off and puts on fucking music. That reminded me of us. I'd be like, yeah, that'd be us. We'd be like, Pinkerton, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, this is a great time for cementing us. <laughs> yeah. And then they run over the guy and slowly back up. Are you all right? <laughs> I thought that was fucking Are you great. you all right? Yeah. Um, I like the uh, the part where they're at the uh, the pub and the um mm-hmm. the jukebox starts playing. Uh, Queen, yeah. Starts wrote- playing Queen. And he's like... All right, kill the queen. The band. <laughs> the band. No, yeah, I had notes about that. Uh, well, I had a, you know, what did I write about that? What's the matter? Oh, yeah, that that's the thing you already mentioned. Shit, because I knew that you would like that. 
Well, I I love fucking um wordplay, not puns. Wordplay, there's a difference. Did I not write it down? Fuck. Well, I just thought um, it was really cool, and like I guess some f- <laughs> it could be some foreshadowing of Baby Driver that like they had that whole scene just synced up to the Queen song, like when they were smacking. The yeah, <laughs> I, I liked how they were in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like like everything that was going on, it was all synced up, and I love that. And because Baby Driver's a movie about a guy who it's like I think he's he's blind. Like it's it's like an impossible concept, but he he's a blind driver who um knows how to drive based off of the music that he's listening to. So it's kinda like a music movie. But uh oh. I don't I have no idea. Uh I, I don't remember it very well because I saw it when it came out and I could have paid more attention. But uh yeah, you'd probably be into it. But like the whole movie's like hooked up to its soundtrack, so it's really cool. Uh and that's what that scene reminded me of. Um, what else do I got? When when Sean's about to kill his, his stepdad, I'm so sorry. Why? What have you done now? <laughs> oh yeah, that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, talking to step, talking to mom about stepdad. Did you know he touched me on several occasions? That was a lie. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> true. I made it up. Sorry. <laughs> I just <laughs> love that so much. The fucking. The the way like every it just gets quiet and they stare at each other for a second. That wasn't true. I'm sorry I made that up. Yeah, because he's trying to persuade his mom to uh, leave him behind. Mm-hmm. I fucking it's so funny. That made me laugh out loud. Uh, then they meet up with that group that perfectly mirrors. Yeah, their group. I was gonna mention that too. I was like, that's cute. Yeah, and then they all just walk by each other and say like the same thing. They're like they both the two Sean say like hey, and then or. Uh, the two ads are like, all right. <laughs> I love. Yeah, they're just like, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was cute. It reminded me a bit of uh the yellow submarine thing where they see themselves. Right, remind me of something that would happen in like Scooby Doo. Probably has happened in Scooby Doo. Uh, yeah. What's the matter? Never taken a short but shortcut before, and then the fence. You already talked about that. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Um, I'm gonna check if the coast is clear. Climbs up the fucking... Oh, yeah, it doesn't cut that at all. Like, him just, like, climbing up this really small uh, like, like slide. This children's slide, and then he just comes back down. Is it? No. No. <laughs> no. no. How many are there? Lots. Lots. <laughs> and then they do their zombie impressions. I love that, because that happened in The Walking Dead. When yeah. they, they walk through the crowd of zombies in, like, the second episode, and then never do it again for some reason. Well... <laughs> much later anyway. well because it's, it's pretty much just like yeah, since the walking dead did that it's become like well this was an before actual that. tactic and oh yeah. really well uh i don't know i guess the uh the comic would have been before this movie i definitely believe but um just the fact that like because that's been like a pretty like well-known strategy like now in the yeah uh, i don't know the zombie folklore i feel like the comic started in like 2003 or something though like early 2000s I don't know, but I just love that. Like that's in this, and it's in a but lot it's funny of zombie that the, media. Uh, the girl that's supposed to be the actress is trying to coach everyone, mm-hmm. and her boyfriend is just uh, like not about it. Uh, I just fucking love it. Yeah, <laughs> and, Ed does and, and like is, a bad one, and then he's, and he's like, just like, "What are you, the zombie expert? Just go ahead, you give it a go." Uh. Oh, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, that was actually pretty good. Uh, they beat up the old dude with sticks to the beat of "Don't Stop Me Now." Yeah, why is Queen still on? I love how he had to ask that like a minute later. <laughs> Did you catch that? No, I didn't. Um, where does the? Oh, I was wondering where the dogs can't look up thing came from. It just sounds like, like unless that's something I'm unaware of. Uh, it just sounds like something like his some dumb shit his friend said in real life, so he put it in the script. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like one of those things. It's like those things that we always talk about. Yeah, who said dogs can't look up? That's stupid. <clears throat> yeah, like we we've definitely had that, like a whole bunch of those like instances every day, every day. <laughs> uh, that's I mean I'm basically at the end. This isn't exactly fair. Here, thank you. <laughs> that was pretty great. When uh, it's like two on one, Sean and Ed versus uh, 
was that the fucking glasses? Guy? Yeah. Yeah. And then he just, Ed gives her, gives uh, his girlfriend the, the fucking Enough. weapon. And he's like, yeah. here, thank you. That's fair. And the last one I wrote, Ed getting bit. Also, that scene is like the most emotionally charged scene in the movie. That one? Yeah. Cause like that's right when, um, the mother like, oh is yeah. Dying and he's like, we got to kill her. And <clears throat> everyone's like, fuck the glasses, dude. And then he just dies. Truth. <laughs> I said, uh, my last note was Ed getting bit is as sad as any of the walking dead death. Don't at me. <laughs> I also like, um, <laughs> I like the, uh, there's this one line where it was, I forgot what he said, but like, he just looks at Liz and he's just like, oh yeah. She was like, what's that? I, who said I, I was going to take you back? And he was like, come on, you don't want to die single. Do you? <laughs> come on. You don't want to <laughs> die single. That was pretty good. Yeah, fuck it. That's it. I mean, I knew I wouldn't have too much to say on this movie. Um, I didn't think you would either. That's, I got <laughs> That's it. I just was saying how well the characters are and there's actually emotion in this as, lo- as well as like so much comedy. Mm-hmm. Like so many jokes that just throws at you rather than just like putting all of its eggs in one <laughs> like shitty skit basket. Yeah, uh, for me, this fires on all cylinders and hits pretty much completely consistently. Well, just it being like so consistently throwing it at you, it's gonna like really set that tone. Yeah. So it's not like as if like you're laughing throughout the whole time because I think a lot of these jokes are like super, super funny, but like it makes it, it makes it charming. Yeah, and I mean, I do think a lot of it's really funny but personally, but <clears throat> But even when there is something serious, they throw a joke at you like right there too. Yeah. And it doesn't ruin it at all. Like, like it complements it completely. Yeah, yeah. It was like it's just written so well. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know it's not like an actual fart, but some but they did work that <laughs> in and it's just it just works. Right. This movie does no wrong with its comedy is the point. Like right. I wasn't I'm not trying to undermine it, say like it's not that funny. It's just it does no wrong either. Right. I agree. Cool. I guess that's that. That's the talk. That's that. I'm cool with that. Uh, we'll have a shorter one tonight. It's yeah. It's, um, because you're driving for yours. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Well, the closing thoughts. This movie has surprisingly, um, sur- surprisingly nuanced characters in a parody movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so watching this, you'll definitely be pleasantly surprised. Like, in no, no matter what you're expecting to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um. That said, it's all downhill from here after this movie. What do you mean? In terms of other movies like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Except maybe Scott Pilgrim, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. Well, it's not really a parody movie. Yeah. You you could say Hot Fuzz is a parody of buddy cop movies. That's a great movie. Uh, We'll probably just watch that at some point, not on the podcast. But, uh, yeah. All right. That's it. Cool. Um, I guess I I don't have much final thoughts. Clearly, I loved it. Um, so <laughs> yeah. So uh, go for it. Give it a number. All right. Well, um, this is pretty much landing squarely. Um, at a a light eight out of ten. Nice. I'm giving it a nine out of ten. Because I was and, like, uh, I'm like, this is definitely a seven, but it's more than that. But like, <coughs> you know. Yeah. I mean. For me, a, a like a vest. I no. probably wouldn't like rewatch it terribly often. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still like super quality, so that's why it has to be like in in the eights. Right, it's not a solid eight. This is actually like a lot of people like Hot Fuzz better. Um, but for me, this is the Edgar Wright film. But also, there there's a reason I recommended this one that you will uh, you will understand after this week. Cool. I Along guess. with my last three wrecks. Yeah, apparently. You'll we'll, finally we'll, we'll under- get to that. Yeah, you'll finally understand the fart. See, but not till next. You can't talk about it till next week. So <laughs> it's gonna be great. <sighs> it's gonna suck. All right. I guess I'll just shut myself in for a week. Okay. So I guess yeah, we will have a short one because I'm a little unsure about how this is gonna go. But I was really excited to share this. All right. Um. And I had you listen to uh, Ele- <laughs> Jimi Hendrix to Electric Boogaloo. Yes. <laughs> um, even though it's his, it's his third album, 
It is like his third album third? and yeah. last album. No, it's not. No, it is. No, it's not. It's the last one he put out before he died. Oh, really? It's the last yes. one before he died? Because mm-hmm. like a few other ones came out <clears throat> after that. Right, yes. Okay, it's his last, uh, you know, there were posthumous releases. But yeah, I did a, a tiny bit of research. Gotcha. That's about that's, the... I mean, that's more research than I've done, sadly, on him. That's pretty much the length of my research. Um, well, that's crazy to know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... All right. Um, give me general thoughts then. Uh, oh, electric Ladyland. We should have. I should have actually said the thing. Oh, you didn't say it. I just said electric boogaloo. Yeah, Jimi okay. Hendrix, electric Ladyland. So, like, general thoughts. Not good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm say. just kidding. Yeah, um, I was afraid you weren't gonna like. No, it. here's the thing. I probably will lose uh, if I had any some credibility here, but I need to make it very clear at the top, right? That this is like a complete taste thing for me Mm -hmm. and not me saying I'm not Anthony Fantano. I'm not like, this is objectively good or bad or blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to like do anything like that. And that said, I definitely didn't hate this album by any means. So like you think it's all right. Uh, I, so (laughs) I, nothing landed in the love category. Wow. But nothing landed in the dislike category. Okay, so it's like pretty much like... It's likes and mez. Perfectly fine, I guess. Yeah, and it it's absolutely nothing to do with Hendrix as a musician or the style or anything. It's just not quite my thing. It's very jam bandy. It's yeah. Very, it's psychedelic, hippie, you know, like that's kind of the... It's a really psychedelic that, rock, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the thing that was going on then. There's a couple songs that are like 15 minutes long because this came (laughs) out in 70 like dead on 70 or 68 68 yes the yes it did the same year as 2001 a space odyssey (laughs) crazily enough yeah um so it was a good year um so what i write for general thoughts um he's obviously very talented like no fucking disputes about that <laughs> um and very passionate i felt uh oh with, yeah with guitar playing and his voice uh i wasn't Most definitely i didn't pick up on many lyrics or anything but like you can tell that the man like needed to get the shit out of him and like oh, he definitely is just like kind of just he's just, like right straight from the soul you know yeah of course That's how he is and it's really great um so i guess it's like a, a quick preface yeah I I, have, and then my only other thing is i just said like it's not something that i listen to myself right um and this was this and uh, you know any music that i've wrecked for you mm-hmm. was has always been like a, a small risk to me but i'm just like i don't know how much he's gonna dig this but i want him to hear it um so it's about time i haven't like gotten away with like oh this is actually great you know <laughs> Yeah, um, because I think you've because definitely... like this was like me trying to push it a little bit because this is a lot more psych- like psychedelic um, than the other stuff you've listened to. <laughs> yes, um, and kind of more with like the other side of the Venn diagram of our music interests that we have mm-hmm. uh, for me, at least. Um, right. Whereas the other ones have been, I guess, more centered. Um, I would agree because have... you know I definitely enjoyed. Uh like the wall and uh the white album i you know we all, all, Ween the, has, all the thus Ween has gotten into my rotation yeah and that's that's a flex and a half for me yeah so <laughs> but it's weird it's because it's Ween. <laughs> um you know and there'll probably be something especially because like i said i'm i'm gonna be mixing it up a bit more with my music with music and uh different kinds of wrecks so i'm sure that we're gonna hit one or two or three things that you're not a huge fan of coming up so it's cool yeah i mean it's it's all like it's all ebb and flow you know with recommendations we're not like trying to recommend oh this is something he'll like we recommend oh i want him to see this or experience this so we can talk about it yes that's what this is um so really quick before we go into the album i don't really have a whole lot of credibility to talk about Jimi hendrix sadly um I only heard two of his albums before this one, so this is my third <laughs> listening to it as well. 
I've heard um, Axis Bold as Love and Cry of Love before this. Um, Are those the first two? That might be the first two. <laughs> I'm wondering, or if you one of those is posthumous or like a greatest hits comp or something. No, they're both like it's just actual albums, not like greatest hits. Okay, well, I'll check if you want to keep... No, his first album was called Are You Experienced, apparently. Yeah, and Cry, Axis of, and Cry of Love came out after Electric Ladyland. Yeah, okay, and Axis Bold of Love was second album, it looks like. Yeah, which is funny because the Cry of Love is more um, is more jam bandy than this one. That makes sense. But Axis Bold of Love is less jam bandy from what I remember. It's been a while since I heard it. That's weird. You say more jam bandy, but I'm seeing that the Cry of Love is only 40 minutes. Well, like, it it, ha- it has a, like that sound where it's like people in the back and just chatting, right? And just oh, kind of right, no, playing. yeah, I guess jam bandy for me. When I say that, I'm talking about like it's just going and going for oh, multiple minutes, yeah, like that's, that's, soloing, and <laughs> that's just progressive rock. <clears throat> <laughs> that's just what progressive rock is, man. Maybe jam band is a derogatory term for yeah, I guess so. Rock. Because it was funny. I don't even know if it's derogatory. I'm gonna. That's check funny because you asked me like, "Are you jam bandy now?" So I guess if that's what it is, then yes, I always have been. I'm checking the depth. I've always been jazz jam bandy. Um, it's a musical genre. Yeah, and last week I also said that this has been recommended to me to check out. Spoiler alert: it was my dad. Um, and I checked it out and was not disappointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, to give my like you know general feelings on it. Um, and I really like this album. Yeah, well, I figured. This is it's definitely a good album to like relax to, just mellow out, you know? Yeah. Um, Sorry, real quick. Jam band definition. A rock band that plays music characterized by long improv- improvisational passages. And uh, I said it began with uh, The Grateful Dead. So it made sense to me that Jimi Hendrix would fit into there. Progressive rock <laughs> to me. Well, like, not not all prog rock bands because not all of them i guess are improvised on the album mm-hmm. um it really depends but yeah, yeah i right. do like those longer songs go for it shit you might be getting a little bit more of that all right let's go um yeah so um to jump into it <laughs> to jump into this 16 track album um and the gods made love all right so do we count this as a track i lied there was a love no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so I put this, I made a new column called Other. Other. <laughs> that's where this is. Because <laughs> uh, you don't hate it, but it's just like, it's whatever. Like, it's it's uh, like listening to the Eraserhead soundtrack. It's like Revolution 9 off of <laughs> Beatles' White Album. Yeah. Or the Fuck Jam in Quebec. And this isn't even the only song in that category, and you must know what the other I one mean, is, but we'll get there. I mean, I heard this song, like, you know, getting first impressions. I don't know if you're in the same boat, but when I first heard this song, I was like, oh, are we doing this kind of album, are we? Yeah, I guess so. It hurt my ears because... Uh, it yeah, was, if you're listening to this with headphones, it's tough. No, I was listening to it in my car, but relatively oh. loud, and it, it was just like a pretty sharp sound. It was like... <laughs> like yeah. I was like, yeah. And, and then you have that like really low, like, mm-hmm. something that's going on, just... Yeah. Some shit going and on. And that's exactly what I'm um, talking about. And it was... I'm just going to say, like, I was walking... I was taking a walk while listening to this album before. And it was panning from your ear to your other, one ear out the out. One okay, ear. sorry. No, what? no, it, it, I don't think it was, at least from what I remember, but like the sun was setting, so like it was genuinely pretty creepy to be walking really? around at night with this playing. Yeah, try it once. <laughs> um, Yeah, this is like an other for me too. I would just put this in meh or like. It's just not either one. Yeah. Um. So then, have you ever been to Electric Ladyland? Okay. Um. So since there's only likes and Maz to choose from, this might confuse you, but it's at the top of meh. R- really? But why? <laughs> this album's gonna be hard for me to talk about. <laughs> Here, l- no, for like just from the top. A lot of this album blends together for me, kind of like I imagine Dookie by Green Day must have blended for you. Yeah, I can under- I can understand that. So, if you're going to want specifics, it's going to be probably pretty hard for me for a lot of these. But uh, this one, 
Well, the thing is, usually for me, the albums that kind of blend over time, I'll end up really liking them after listening to them a bit more, like giving them more chances. Yeah, and I know I know what you mean. Um, the song is only like two minutes too. Yeah, you, I know. Yeah, so like usually something makes you want to keep listening, though, right? If you want to to listen until like the blend becomes like, oh no, these are all their own thing. Yeah. Like yeah, you've got to be into that sound. To or it's want. just like some yeah, like some yeah. or like you go for back for one song and then it's like oh that one stands out and that one stands out. So, I don't remember too much about the song, and maybe that's why it's in me. Have you ever been to Electric Lady Land? Like some shit like that. Yeah, that's pretty much all the song because it's like two minutes and there's some build. Um, I really like the song. It's a like for me. I thought well, for I- me, it's a good start. So like this, like yeah, this is like the opening track, the actual yeah. opening track. I guess I have no way to predict how you felt about this album, <laughs> because, uh, like I said, to me it's kind of like one entity. It's an experience, mm. which was his whole thing, the Jimi Hendrix experience, which is definitely more like what it felt like than a track by track kind of well, album. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's kind of what music is. It's all experiences. That to, to sound like super hippy dippy. No, that that's a. Uh, <laughs> For me, it's like it can, it can absolutely be that, and that's why I love albums. Yeah, I mean that's why. Yeah, we're both album people. We um, are, but I definitely think like there are there are definitely songs that I'll want to hear like piece by piece, um, like that I don't need to hear in context of the album. I all guess the time. more specifically, music in this genre is more experiences for me. I would definitely say that, but even still, that can bleed into. Um, Beatles as well being yeah. experiences and I guess Streetlight is an experience <laughs> for me it's some, an experience and a half well for me some albums definitely like I prefer to listen to the entire album all well, the like, way through Elliot like, was, was what it was always an experience for me too and so was I could totally yeah and you said kind of that and Elliot, so it was brand new as well for me. Elliot all blended for you at first when I gave you either or, and I knew that would be that that way. So I took a risk with my first recommendation. Yeah, but I still like it did my best to like take those songs p- part by part. Yeah, but yeah, I was going to say like some of my favorite albums of all time. I prefer to listen to in context of like the entire album, like uh, Pinkerton or The Devil and God Are Raging Inside Me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Pinkerton is more of an experience than Blue. I think so. Which is why I guess we prefer it, but like that, not to say that like Blue isn't bad. It's just no, it's what, really, really good. What is an experience? You Blue's know? another 10. Like, we're never going to talk about either yeah. of those on here, so Might probably. Well. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Just like, we- you know, probably American Idiot is more of an experience than Dookie, but. Yeah, probably. I mean, but then like you get like close to like, oh, so experience means more of a concept. Eh, not that's not what we're here to discuss yeah <laughs> but yeah i get what you mean anyway i think this is a great opening track um and i love how he hits those high notes like pretty effortlessly there's mm-hmm. a lot of like um this whole, there's a lot of instrumentation that goes on here mm-hmm. and like i was hoping that you could see like um um a parallel with this and jeff buckley i could with like yeah. how how he sings and about all the different instrumentations and dynamic parts that are going on. I definitely could. Mo- especially with the as a guitar playing. Like, that's obviously what you're here for. So, th- that's good. At least you can see that. Like, yeah. And I guess with with Jeff Buckley, um, I was, like, very confused on that at first, if you remember that discussion. I mean, mm-hmm. now I'm a little more comfortable with it. But even Jeff Buckley, for me, was, like... A little outside my comfort zone when I first heard Grace all the way through. I mean, yeah, when I heard Grace all the way through, we're getting so off topic. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, the first time I listened to it, even like after listening to Grace, this was like the first time since like maybe Streetlight that you showed me music and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, well, Weezer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. who likes Weezer yeah. uh, anyways next song we're gonna be here all night yeah. uh, Crosstown Traffic this one's a like what are you playing it for did you forget it 
This is that just that kazoo part? Yeah, it's I like thought, a guitar, I'm pretty thought, sure. Yeah, I thought it was. It's like a talk box, I think. Yeah, I think maybe. So. I'm not actually sure. I thought but. a talk box is, goes makes it go. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, it makes it do all sorts of. Oh things. yeah, no, you're right. It could be a talk box. Yeah, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Mo- I don't know. Like more wawas. Um, it could be, but I always like to think it's kazoos. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it sounds like a kazoo. Uh, I put this in like. Um, they're all like or mad. Yo, like Google, I said. can you stop going fucking <laughs> insane on me? Jesus Christ, who came up with this fucking shitty app? But this was a higher like, I think, because uh, so I I pretty thoroughly enjoyed about half of the album. Gave yeah, me yeah. So that's good. I just like to picture um Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell um just playing with kazoos while Jimmy's like up at the front with the guitar uh in this song. Mm-hmm. Um I really like what's going on instrumentally. Vocals not so much. He kind of gets a little like rowly a bit. Mm-hmm. So he's definitely more like I guess rock and roll type. I'm st- it's still in like maybe more towards the bottom though. Cause I'm never like, oh yeah, this song. But like, it's definitely like the one that you hear, um, after um, welcome. Have you ever been? Well, yeah. I mean, the f- for me, the first two. Uh, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. Actually, for for me, when this one kicked on, I was like, yeah, cause like, <laughs> yeah, cause it got it was like more upbeat. It was like. And then like starts kind of jamming, dun, 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 dun. yeah. Like it, I was like, "Here we go." Fuck and then yeah. he just starts singing about his car. I didn't know what he was singing about. But. Um, it's kind of funny, like, um, because this song, I can definitely hear how it's influenced, um, my dad's music. Really, that's basically what Thrust is like. <laughs> this is it's the song. <laughs> um, well, it's good. It's serviceable. Like, I don't. It's a jam still. I don't remember too much about it which is something you're just gonna have to get used to hearing but uh i know that when this song came all three times when this song came on it was exciting compared to the first two for me right well i mean it's a definitely a tone shift you know um the first track not counting in the gods may love yeah um the first track is, you know, really, really mellow, relaxed, like pretty much what you expect out of, you know, psychedelic rock. But I mean, this thing is, this album is pretty like well-rounded, I think, in terms of like it sounds. Yep. Um, so next track. I did, yeah, I did think that was going to be one of my favorites, but I guess it's sixth. I mean, I, I'm glad you like it still. It yep. sounds like you like it more than me, but like it's still a good song. Mm-hmm. It's just a little tonally different. So the next song, Voodoo Child. Voodoo Child. Um, well, it's Child because it's spelled Chile. Yeah, Chile. I was like Voodoo Chile. <laughs> Here's what I wrote: Strange lyrics, jam bandy. Strange lyrics, jam bandy. I mean, yeah, it's a 15 minute song. It's pretty there was long. A, there's a lot. Like I get what it's I I get what it means, but there's that line in there like make love to you while you're sleeping or something. I was like. <laughs> Uh, what I did not catch that? <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, and and you don't fight or something like it says something like weird, and then I think I realized what he's talking about. Um, I should have pulled up lyrics, but <laughs> what he's talking about, I think, is um, being on tour and like calling, um, calling a lover, and uh. You know, because a lot of a lot of bands. I love how it's a fifteen-minute song, and you only get two paragraphs worth of lyrics. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bands and like a lot of people write lyrics like about uh, being away from home or from a lover, blah blah blah. Gotcha. Um, so I think that's actually what it, like if you read that like the next line, I think that's what it's saying. Do you see it on there? I don't know. He looked up the words. Yeah, I'm trying to like just scroll through it. Make love to you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but here's my, uh, disappointing take. It's one of my least favorites. <laughs> um, probably because it just, uh, like it was hard for me to pay attention to and it's really long. I mean, some of these songs for me, like, I'm, I can't really pay attention to it. Like if, especially if I got, if I'm doing something else, mm-hmm. um, but usually it's just like, you know, music to like kind of relax too. Yeah. Or just kind of, you know, 
um, well, yeah. take a break too instead of like actually like you know getting into all of it. Yeah, I try to immerse myself in the yeah, music. When it. you give me a rec, I try to make sure like I'm giving it my full attention all three times. Um, and I guess like with with this like that was a challenge. Not just this song, like I guess most of the ones in Meh, I just found my mind like wandering. I mean, that kind of sucks because for me, this song is in love. I figure. It fucks with. Yeah, well. For me, I think this is like, this to me, Voodoo Channel is like the main event for this album. I know this is. Uh, this is what I came here for. <laughs> yeah, I know this is like your, your total, totally like your kind of thing. But yeah. for me, it's second to last. <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, like, don't you like the part where like, um, it comes right back up to the chorus, like we're built back up to that? Um, I don't know. Like for me, it's really satisfying when it's like just kind of doing all this jam stuff, and then it kind of come in, comes and kicks back in the gear. Mm-hmm. And then with the Hammond going crazy with "I'm a Voodoo Child," some good shit. <clears throat> it's I don't know because this one particularly, uh, I think, all kind of blended in my head. Like, I said that for this album mm-hmm. as a whole, but, like, like it was really hard for me to, like, differentiate that anything was happening. It just kind of felt like the same song for, like, same sound for 15 minutes. Yeah, damn. Maybe I shouldn't show you uh, Echoes then. Echoes. <laughs> the Pink Floyd song that's 24 minutes. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Malad likes it. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's more... um. I feel like it's it has more form than this. This is a bit more free form, but yeah. I, I normally prog rock is more free form, so I definitely yeah. like can appreciate, especially like when it comes back to like find the chorus. Yeah, I and <laughs> that makes sense to me, like with the kind of stuff you grew up writing and playing and stuff and listening to. Especially because you write songs that are like twenty five minutes sometimes. Well, you wrote <laughs> you wrote one. Yeah. Um. It, it, but it's more like an EP, I guess, not just like one actual song. Yeah. I would love to do that. Um. I have been. I've written like an eight minute piano piece that people love. Right. Um. But so like yeah, yeah and the free form it's, it's influ. It, well, I guess this this influenced me. You know. Yeah. That's good. If you so remember, I mean, yeah. If you remember. When we talked about Jeff Buckley again, like one of the things that made it hard for me right off the bat was like it's like free form. It's like more free form than I'm used to. It's really not. Gotcha. Now that I've heard it more. Right. And for I'm me, like with that album, no, there's definitely structure. There's a chorus, there's I'm stupid, whatever. Yeah. But like at the time, like I just couldn't get out of three listens for that album, I couldn't get it. I was like, this feels very like uh, maybe that's why I clicked with it yeah. so quickly because I was just like this is like the stuff that you're showing me but like also the stuff that I knew where it's like a little bit more free form so yeah. it's like the best of both worlds and I'm just like ah <laughs> right it's great <laughs> that's like when when you first discover well, like when you first discover peanut butter and chocolate like you can just go together and it's like <gasps> holy shit right um <coughs> But yeah, I had an ex who didn't like peanut butter and chocolate. All right, let's keep talking. Well, I usually say peanut butter and jelly, but that's like the only thing everybody knows. And peanut butter and chocolate is way better anyway. But yeah, let's keep up. going. A uh, little Miss Strange. Okay, so I said Beatlesy. I don't care what you say. No, it's on 100 percent Beatlesy. Okay, <laughs> like, I wrote Beatlesy. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, I because I thought no, you'd it, fight me on that. No, of course not. I was gonna say like that's probably the only thing I have to say about this. And honestly. It's a little it's a little weird that it's in this album. It is. I'm just well, you also get that Who's weird singing? like burr, 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 like Yeah, who who's like more singing? kazoo sounds? Who um, is it? Do you know? Is it's not Jimi Hendrix, is it? I I don't know if it's his bandmates that sing it. Maybe um, it's all of them. <laughs> yeah. The other two fellows are Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell. Yeah. Which my dad is actually jammed with. That's it's pretty cool. fucking sick. Yeah, and he was like yeah, Mitchell's really, and I don't know, if, he said one of them, he's like, yeah, one of them was actually really nice, really stand-up guy. The other one wasn't. Oof. <laughs> I was like, damn. But Rip. yeah, it's really cool that he jammed with them. But yeah, this one is 100% less beatles Eve from Help era. Really? Well, yeah. Was Help out before this or after yeah. this? Yeah, no, it was, it was out way before this. 
Damn. This is 68. This is like at the end of the Beatles. Oh life yeah, cycle. this is this is White Album era, huh? Um I think White Album came out before this maybe. Um we just keep talking about other shit. Yeah. Anyway, really though. This was a like, uh which shouldn't be surprising because like I <laughs> It almost made me wish <laughs> this is gonna sound shitty. Okay. That I was hearing another Beatles album, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. Like honestly, I think I no, I think I I just fucking um, it's in my top five. I think I just deja vu'd myself because I remember having a dream where you're like, yeah, it's not like I was listening to another album. <laughs> I th- no, I think you said that about Ween. Um, anyway, really quick. I, that song really reminds me of this Beatles song. It's Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Well, since uh, they need to hear something, um, this is my fourth favorite song. That's the, f- interesting. I guess we're going to have all the different opinions. Yeah, apparently. Because I was, I was just getting the vibe like, yeah, it's Beatlesy, but I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what my feeling is with Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Well... Just a yeah, bit. that's not a funny like thing. I, I don't really love that thing, that Beatles song you're just playing. But <laughs> from what I heard from the five seconds, well, because uh, it's I doubly don't like it because I'm an albums person, and that is the last song on the album after yesterday, and you know what yesterday Ew, is. That's weird. So yeah, it's just like a ballad, and then it's just <laughs> it's like what the fuck. Anyway, oh uh, gosh, so I liked Little Miss Strange though. Um, Unless you get something out of it, yeah. I'm I'm just more like, why is this here? But okay, this is math for me. I don't love it. Like, here's the thing. Uh, I guess I'll just say now, the fact that nothing's in love means that this just there's probably just no song that I'll be going back to to play and hear on my own. I'm gonna play Voodoo Child then for you. Okay. Or there's another song that I'm probably gonna replay for you. Uh, that's in like this my top favorite. Um, I guess Voodoo Child will be in my my third favorite. Maybe I never really paid too much thought to that um but anyway next track long summer long hot summer night <laughs> you like you like this song. one don't you squidward what makes you say that because it's uh my least favorite track huh because it's my least favorite track really <laughs> yeah but why I mean, it's, a, it's just in like actually i don't okay. i don't love it um I'm telling you, especially with the Mez, they're there for a reason. I don't remember it that well. I just remember like nothing was working too much for me. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here. It's only three minutes too. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of got most of what uh, kind of turned my ears off. Um, I mean, I'm not huge com- on the uh, where were you when it's alone? Well, yeah, yeah. When alone, yeah, yeah. Uh, it just yeah, it got it has pretty much all the aspects that made me like you know like I just said tune out. This is like bottom like though for me. Okay, yeah, it's it's uh it's my least favorite, but like it's still definitely like not a dislike. I don't know, <laughs> nothing I, got close I'm, to dislike. I guess I'm so, in the same position as you, but I don't think it's my least favorite. I'll say nothing got close to dislike, but something did get close to love. Oh, that's good then. Um, I just could. I just had to be like, could I see myself like listening to this again though? Probably not. Like, I wouldn't put it on. Gotcha. Not that much, um, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's fair. I'm not really huge on this track either, but probably my least favorite is still a Little Miss Strange. So, really, okay, but maybe I don't know. I, didn't even I don't catch know that if I said... have a least favorite on okay. here. I mean, it's just really weird and jarring. So, like, I didn't catch no, that you said that. There's no tracks in here that I'm like. Ugh, you know. Yeah. Um, but we have uh come on, let the good times roll. Sounds like you like it. The um, next track. Well, yeah, I said I really like the first two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it quit doing that uh too quickly. I-, I wanted it to be just like a a fast tempo shit. Yeah, it's kind of a fast tempo shit. Yes. This, this is where our like styles are clashing, I guess. Cause like yeah, I I like that um first part too, but this is very much a um a blues uh, call and response. Yep, I wrote type of song. I wrote guitar blues. Really like the first two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not big on blues, but I really like this song. 
Okay. Come yeah, on, I figured. sugar, let the good times roll. It's uh, it's at the bottom of my likes. Ah. Uh, well, at least uh, it's in love. <laughs> yeah. At least it's in like. Yeah. Um, this one's a fucks with for me, but not in my top three. Um, I enjoyed it. I think it, it yeah. was. Uh, there's this crazy um, cover that someone di- does on it on something stupid like a clavinet or something yeah with a whammy bar attached to it so can you imagine like a really small keyboard the fucking whammy bar sticking out the top of it yeah and he just fucking slaps it every now and then it's crazy but like it's really good um this does sound like um there's a lot going on in the song still though for what it is this is one of his biggest songs right i think so I don't know. You don't have to check that. Yeah, I'm not going to check it yet because I know one song was like in his top five on Spotify and I was like, really? And it's not Voodoo Child. Mm-hmm. Voodoo Child. Yeah. Um, is it actually called Voodoo Child? Yeah, I it seriously is. thought that was a Spotify typo. No, it's called Voodoo Child. Weird. Because like the, um, the uh, slight return at the end is called Voodoo Child. Yeah, I know, but I figured they were both supposed to be. <laughs> no. He even says voodoo child in the uh in the song. Well, I'm right. a voodoo child. All right. All right. Well, well, did you have anything else to say about this? Oh yeah, I think um I think this track is just pretty consistent all the way through, like peanut butter. It's really yeah, good. I mean, I'd say so. It's li- li- really good and you creamy just, for me. It just, you know, uh depends if you're into that sound or not. It's tasty. Mm-hmm. Tasty. I think it's consistent for sure. Um, and I think, yeah, that's why it's at the bottom of my likes. Cause I was like, I like this. Like, there's nothing that made me be like in three listens. There's nothing that made me be like, ah, oh, this has got to be a meh. But I've got to say, remember after the first time I heard this, I warned you like, I don't even know if I can categorize these. And I yeah, did, and I, I did worried. it. I did it. But like, it's a little strange. Yeah. That's why I was worried. But, um, next track, gypsy eyes. This isn't like for me i do not like this beginning i'm not surprised you don't like it i do <laughs> i said at the same time it came on it gives it a backbone it's just like it give, yeah i like that too um it gives it something it's just it's just like here's your canvas so yeah i, like I mean that. i like i definitely like where it goes and i like the melody it's just that like beginning i'm just like eh i like the beginning I, but I like stuff like that. I like stuff that's like, like a lot, a lot of songs that, not a lot that I like. But I usually like that approach when, Hell, when I've had a f- when the drums come in and it's like, yeah, there's your canvas, and then they add like the bass, and then the guitar, and then the vocals, and then like it comes into the actual song. Like, yeah, like I, I I appreciate like that structure. It's just like what the drums were doing. <laughs> Yeah, and then the guitar is just kind of like it's just it's just like repeat riffs, I guess, and I'm just like, eh. I like the. I wasn't really expecting that out of this album, like as I was going. I like um, the guitar melody in it a lot, uh, so that's why it's in like. Uh, it's not like eh, it's right below Crosstown Traffic for me. I mean, this is still in like. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm talking bad on it because I really like where it goes. Right. Um, and there are lots of tracks on here where they'd be in my head. Yeah. Um, and this was one of them. That makes sense. We're, and it would be like when we're driving and shit, and I'm like, fuck, I can't sing any of these songs like, as I go, because then it'll uh, it'll show you what tracks I like and influence you or whatever. Because there are lots of parts where I was just like, lots of days where I was just singing Voodoo Chow in my head. Voodoo um, Chow. All right, so the next track, Burning of the Midnight Lamp. Burning of the Midnight Lamp. I think this one... Yeah, it's uh in my top three. Nice. Uh, so it's a like. <laughs> so it's a like. Um, top three. Yeah, it's uh the third of my top three. What do you that's have to it. say? Oh, I mean, this isn't fucks with obviously. Okay, this well, is my favorite yeah, song. That's the do 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 do. Which is what I mostly liked about it. <laughs> I think. Oh, oh well, and, and and it goes into like a verse that sounded familiar to like a structure that I'm used to. So I liked that. Oh yeah, this is all, this is almost like a Ween song, but like, yeah, done by done by Jimmy. Um, and it's really great. I love where this is going, and it's like there's such a complexity to it that like you can't even replicate, and it's frustrating. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite track on this album. I definitely love the sound that goes with it. Neat. Yeah. Well, we agreed on something. Yeah, that's all. That's why I said I was gonna play this song a whole bunch around now. Cause it's so good. Um, yeah, that's it. It's just really good. It is really good. Uh, yeah. Third well, song. Rainy day, dream away. Uh, meh. It's a meh for me. I mean, I like songs that just kind of give you a vibe and then like stick with that and like. That's really what I enjoy about that Menzinger song, Transient Love. Like, it kind of just gives you a vibe and sticks with it for yeah. five minutes. And, like, usually I like that, but my and mind some, was... some brand new, too, does that. But, yeah, and, like, I like that. Usually, like, that's my thing. I guess this vibe just made my mind wander. I can agree with, it, like, under the context of this, um, of, of this album. Yeah. Like, this is a little, like, oh, is this it? Yeah, you know, like I definitely want it to build and more and all that. So like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm in my head. I'm just like, damn, I'm gonna get the midnight lamp, and then here I'm just like, okay, time to vibe again. Yeah, it's vibing. Like it's kind of like it's a good song to listen to when you're walking around, but like you kind of just space out and think about other stuff. So it's a meh. It, yeah, it was a meh because like, because it does like for a minute there, I'm like I'm vibing, but like it definitely loses my attention, and that's why it's in meh. Right, 1983. <laughs> a merman I should turn to be. So this is kind of funny. Um, because it's probably my favorite song on here. <laughs> really? Why? It's this is the this is the other long one. It's thirteen minutes. Yeah, I know. Well, here's the thing. About five or six minutes in, or something, it goes into just like kind of mini solos. Like I imagine, it sounds like it was recorded live or something. I don't know if it was, but. It's right. just kind of like drum solo, guitar solo, like little bass solo kind of like. And I don't know. It kind of puts me mentally just like. It kind of puts me into that mindset oh, where I song. where I can feel like I'm at a show and right. and, and I can kind of accept that a little more. Um, it It's not like a consistent sound. It's like here's some of this, here's some of this, here's some of this, and like it kind of changes it up a little bo- more for me in my head. But that said, that's definitely not what I liked about the song. Like if that was the whole song, like without the first five minutes or so, then it would probably be a meh. Yeah, or the end part. It's interesting that you like this so much because this is a really prog rocky type of song. Well, I really like what it's doing up until that point. Well, like it goes on for like five or six minutes, and then it's like solos, and then like here's some like weird percussion and drum stuff that's going on for like another yeah. four minutes, and then oh, back to uh, some more vocals, and then the song just kind of like just ends. Yeah, well, I really uh, like an an outro, instrumental outro. I really like the guitar uh, melody that kind of. Um, is throughout the first few minutes of it. Do you remember what I'm talking about? No, no, because I can't sing it for you or anything. <laughs> I forget how it goes. I know I liked it every time. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. Oh, yeah, and I love what um the vocals are doing too. Just mm-hmm. like all the time, especially when it comes back after like that really long instrumental break, just and down and down and down and down we go. Yeah, so, so I guess, I guess I just didn't know this one by name because like, fuck, how does this one go again? I'm like, oh, it's this song. Yeah, this one's probably my second favorite. I think. Uh, so obviously, in fucks with. If, if it was just like the first five minutes or so it might have been love (laughs) but i don't know how you can't love the rest of it either no i don't i don't not love it like Mm -hmm. like in voodoo child (laughs) it goes on like the same sound for 15 minutes yeah i already explained to you yeah this one's i guess more it feels more varied to me okay that's good to know because like i mm, feel like i can i mean I don't know. I feel like lots of the longer prog songs I can say are pretty varied, but like Voodoo Child, I would say that, but you're like, oh, it's the same sound. I'm like, so I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just to me. I don't know. Um, Echoes is kind of like different sections, I guess. Um, so That gives me more to work with, I think. Like, yeah, so maybe you would like it too. Just I'm just tossing that there as an example. Yeah, it's like the same reason 
like I know Freebird's a meme, but like once it gets through like the instrumental part of that, everyone like talks about that song as if, as if it's a guitar song. I can't stand that shit. I don't want to hear a five minute solo. I just never do. <laughs> I never do. Well, like it seldomly is like you know for these prog rock is like just all guitar solo. Yeah, unless it's animals. <laughs> um, <coughs> but even then, like you get a whole bunch of other different shit. Right. Um. And some of it's a little bit weird, but other times it's, you know, um, it, it it's more like Voodoo Child where it's just more jam based. Right. Rather than like, we're, let's, get, let's get funky and weird with this. Ooh, let's just test out this. Let's try the number six this time. Mm. Let's try this sauce this time. But you can't. And then you try it and it's just like, oh, I realized the Chick-fil-A sauce was the best. What am I talking about? Um, is that it for this track? That's it. Okay, cool. Because I really like this one. Second favorite. Fucks with. Cool. Next one. Moon. Turn the tides gently, gently away. Other. <laughs> other. I told you there was another other. Um, That was one minute. It sounds. Oh, it's literally just. It's a soundscape. Yeah. I thought this was part of a, a track of another song or the next yeah, one. Yeah, no. So it's literally just an in between. Yeah, that's fair. Other. Oh, All right, next one. Still raining, still dreaming. I liked this one better than uh, <laughs> Ra- than rainy day dream away. Wow. This was the other one that's in my head a bunch. Okay, I'm just doing the guitar part in my head. It's just so weird, but like, I don't know, like, because a whole other part of these songs, like in Little Miss Strange and um. Uh, what's the other one that I was like not so huge on? Gypsy Eyes, where it's like this guitar doing all these weird shit and like stylized melodies, and I'm like, yeah. But this one, I'm like, yeah. So I guess here, it's just it's a taste thing, I guess. I don't know because mm-hmm. I can't objectively say like, oh, this is what did, this is what did better because this one I definitely like. Well, wait, you're comparing this to what song? Um. Gypsy Eyes oh, okay. and Little Miss Strange. Well, they're uh, Gypsy Eyes. I'm talking. I'm comparing specifically the guitar parts to those songs. Right. This song and Gypsy Eyes are right next to each other for me, so I guess that lines up. <laughs> um, I put Gypsy Eyes slightly above this, but I, I swear, like there's so many that it was hard to put in order. Um, I try to put them in order now. I never used to do that. Did the song jump scare you? No. It didn't to me. <laughs> There's a jump scare? Yeah, right at the beginning because the opening chord is just bang. Oh, no. <laughs> jump scare the shit out of me. Damn. It's like, oh shit, it's loud. <laughs> no, I don't know. I Yeah, I liked it better than Rainy Day Dream Away, which is what I saw it as a sequel to. Because, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, still raining, still dreaming. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I definitely like this one a lot. It's in like... I feel like most of these are unlike. I didn't write these down. I'm just saying it as I go. Yeah. Um. So I feel like most of them are unlike. Like one or two are in meh. Um. So then burning house burning down. House burning down. This was my last meh. Like this one. Yeah. This one's a pretty cool march for me. Right. Um. And I like what's going on here. Lots of more stylistic stuff. It's another one that, like, most of my meds are just things, like, I couldn't remember it that well, and then, like, every time I heard it again, I was like, why did I put this in meh? And then I hear it, I'm like, oh, yeah. It's staying there. Like, but I don't <laughs> remember much, like, about it, I guess. Um, do you have a comment for it? Uh, I already said my comment on it. That's it, then. <laughs> um, I, I do kind of forget about this one, but it's still, I still enjoy it when it's on. Yep. Um... All along the watchtower. This is the one you're uh, wondering why it's in the top. Yeah. Uh, well, and this was the one that's in the top. Well, it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, this isn't fucks with for me too, but like. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's uh, my second favorite. It's very structured. I think that's why. Yeah, and like he it's- really shows off his dynamic vocal range here. Yep, yeah, loved like his. He's going everywhere. Melodies. The guitar is great as always. I feel like this one's actually more accessible for me to come back to if I wanted to hear Jimi Hendrix. Like, if I wanted yeah, to hear the sound, this is more accessible to me than 1983. So, there's that about it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, because 1983 is a 13-minute piece, this is four minutes. 
Yeah. Um, I think that's what my dad said his favorite one was too. I'm not sure. Um, it makes sense because like the way he sings inspired how he sang too. Yeah. You can definitely hear that. But that tangent aside, yeah, I mean, this one's a groove and I really enjoy it. So awesome. it's fucks with. And then the last song, Voodoo Child, Slight Return. That one's in my top five. Really? Yeah, I liked it a lot more than the original Voodoo Child. Well, yeah, because it's a more like rock heavy type of like, this is the end here and like make it big. Yeah, it's, the, it's my fifth. The end chorus is really big for this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really, obviously this isn't fucks with cause so is Voodoo Child. Right. So like to me, these are like the same. Yeah. For me, it's pretty different. It's a 1983 all along the watchtower burning of the midnight light, a little bit strange and Voodoo Child. I'm pretty glad they didn't start off with uh, Voodoo Child like as the first track. Yeah. Cause I feel like, um, lots of bands would do that. Yeah. Cause they have that, you know it coming back right um so yeah this then fucks with for me this is the one that i tried to learn for my dad like five years ago the, it's, the return not, one? not yeah not the uh not the 15 minute long. gotcha okay i was gonna say like really why did you learn that it's 15 minutes yeah i don't know which one he wanted me to learn now that i think about it but this is the one that or just I, probably something from this song yeah Rather than like the whole thing. Yeah, so I actually learned that like opening guitar thing at one point. <laughs> and then do 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 do. But yeah. I mean, that's cool. I guess uh, that's that. That's the whole album. I think that might be the record for busting through an album, maybe. I don't know. We were pretty busting tangity. through a podcast, yeah. We were pretty tangity, so like. I don't know. Yeah, man. I said I we had the right opening for this episode because I was like, all right, here we fucking go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we didn't really have a whole lot to say about either, I guess. I mean, I really like it. Right. So to give closing thoughts, I think, um, well, my dad says this is the best Jimi Hendrix album. <laughs> That's how he advertised it to me. Right. And to me, I think that holds true. I think I would want to give, well, I have to listen to all of them before I even say. <laughs> holds true for what you've um, heard. This my this is probably my favorite. Um Axis Bold of Love has a lot like crazier like guitar moves. Right. It's probably more structured, so I'd have to listen to that again. But like this one I really enjoyed like all the way through. It was a real it's real experience. Right. It had its ebbs and flows, but it was overall consistent. Mm-hmm. So that's all I have to say. Right. Oh, and you want me to Flo rate it? Yours. Yeah. Rate it. Final thoughts. Uh, I didn't write any final thoughts. They're kind of the same as my opening thoughts. Um, Which, you know, I'll just reiterate again that, like, I'm I'm rating this based off of taste. How you enjoyed it. Because, yeah, because that's always been a point of contention for me. Uh, Do I rate something based purely on how much I enjoyed it or do I rate it on how objective? what i'd think it objectively would should deserve and so like some older ratings and more recent ratings and maybe future ratings might be a little inconsistent because i've constantly got this battle in my head of like do i rate it on how much i personally enjoyed it or what i think it is because right. i even put a question mark here next to it because for me it wins out overall as an enjoyable experience Mm -hmm. as a six, which is a surprise, which I figured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) that does not mean that this album is a fucking six out of 10. That just means that's my experience with it. That's my rating for it. Yeah. And like, you know, when some, you lose some with, uh, toss and shit that you're not as, uh, verse or not as much in your taste. Yeah. I guess my tastes are just broader. <laughs> You're so well. I'm not not gonna not gonna bust your balls on this. Um, for me, I'm definitely gonna revisit this album. I mean, I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So it's getting a solid eight out of ten for me. Damn, I feel like even people would say that's too low. So I mean, it's it probably deserves a nine, but like, I mean, I still have preferences over um Jimi Hendrix as like as blasphemous as that sounds, but I don't. To ever deny how 
amazingly talented that man is. Yeah, and I definitely do not either. <laughs> um, and he's such a huge like <laughs> music figure that's like kind of like kind of picked up where the Beatles left off with like psychedelic rock. Um, right. But you know, Pink Floyd was also doing their stuff at the same time. Beatles were still there. Um, no, like that was when they started. Yeah. So, I mean, it it was like the start of a, a different era. Right. Um, and another artist has just gone too soon, but. 27 club <laughs> yeah um so it really sucks i mean i haven't like listened to all his albums but like from what i've heard they're not they don't hold up to me as much as electric ladyland right but it's still such a bitching album for me sweet um yeah and they'll definitely have it proudly there in, like one of the albums i'm like yeah about great then uh that's that I that guess. is that well yeah, I was like, wait, <laughs> did, wait, did you rate it? Or... Yeah, you did. <laughs> wait, give it an eight. Rate? I gave it a six. Um, all right. Well, that's that. So uh, just a couple of eights for me today. Yeah, a couple of eights. I gave a a six and a nine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Actually, I gave a nine and a six. Nice. Um, so they're facing the wrong way. Let us now recommend each other things for next week. <laughs> To talk about. That was framed really weirdly. What do you have planned? Uh, Well, actually, it's you. It's you first. It's me first. So. so you'll have to, even when we're finally talking, and you know how all this stuff came together for this fart of a recommendation, you'll have to wait until we're done talking about your thing first. <laughs> I don't know, a harm set follow, but yeah, sure. Well, I, I foreshadowed a little bit in the beginning, yeah. and... That's because now I'm going to be doing the same thing you did because, of course, right. we have to work in gimmicks like that. Yeah. In reality, this is going to kind of work as like... This is going to... Be, let me just is, say... This is going to pad for time for me. You said this was a three... three. This is a chain of three wrecks, right? Yes. You're going to have the most fucking ideas for wrecks that you really want to talk about during these next three weeks. Just trust me. All right, go for it's it. It's actually four, but only three of them are related, so I'm not counting it, but four are planned. Okay. So I'm just going to say this is the trilogy here. Um, and it's not even going to be like you or it's like this four week anticipation of like how are they all related. The set after the second one, you're going to, you know, no, after this first one, you're going to see what these all are. Okay. <laughs> I guarantee you. Um, I'm not going to look out for it. I like, call it. No, it's just, it's just going to be apparent. It's not like something weird like your Rex. All right. It's just, duh. Um, yeah, mine's impossible to make sense unless you already knew what I'm going to read. Yeah, so um, in this one, I'm actually going to have to rewatch. Movie. Yeah, it's a movie. These, these are all movies. Um, this is just going to pad for time while I look for m- more music and other movies and all that shit. Maybe even a game. Okay. Who knows? Um, but yeah, you're getting all movies. Uh, this one I need to rewatch. Um, do not look at my lettered box because it's probably rated there. Okay. Um. You're getting the prestige. The prestige. Okay. I had never heard of it. Let's see. When did it, it stars um Yeah, it came out two thousand six and it stars Batman, Christian Bale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was actually like I've I definitely have uh heard yeah, heard Hugh, the name of this movie. Hugh but... Jackman, Scott Johansson, Michael Caine. Okay. David Bowie. Sweet. So pretty crazy cast. Here. David Bowie's actually in the Twin Peaks movie. Really? Yeah. Everyone's there. Damn. In a fire walk with me. Yeah. Um. Okay. The Prestige. I'm just writing that down. You re- you're wrecking a movie. Either. You're wrecking a movie, and it's not about. It's not music now. Yeah, it's not about music. <laughs> not about music. Uh, I. Am though recommending you a music. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'm getting an album this time. Yeah, you knew that. Hey, yippee. <laughs> That's as much as you knew. Uh, short album. Um, I'm recommending you. Okay, gonna get Spotify up <laughs> real quick. Okay. Yeah. A day to remember. Oh, why? <laughs> what am I getting a day to remember? And their name was Treason. And their name was Treason. Yes. First album of theirs. First Day to Remember album. Yes. I am 
really curious to why you've never had me listen to a day to remember ever before. But you just sounded so so confused that you got this. <laughs> I am confused that I've gotten data remember. Oh, because you want to know how it all comes together? Well, that and <laughs> also like where does this come from? Like, okay. Oh, wait. Well, actually, I'm not sure why you want me to listen to data remember you never had me before. That's why. Well, as you can see, I've had this plan for a few weeks, but Yeah. <laughs> but uh I want you to one of it's your treason, man. special special requests. I think I get this because your album's short. I want you to do one of your listens with lyrics open. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, one the first song has no lyrics, and the last song has a uh, one line. I'm gonna save mm-hmm. that for the last listen. Okay. Because on yeah. the first two, I'll probably I'll pick up on some of them. Maybe. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, we'll see. Um. But yeah, I want you to have lyrics open. And uh, only eight out of ten songs will really have lyrics even. So, perfect. <sighs> Forget a music again. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Curious. How music do these from pieces me. fit together? Yeah, well, it's a fart. So, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll, we'll have to wait. It's going to be dumb. It's going to be like, it's going to like make a sentence or something. All right. <laughs> it's probably that. Let us now blow out the candle. What the candle question mark? Dude, it's weird. It's been an hour and forty one minutes. Fuck, let's just talk for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now let's end this shit. All right. Thank you for tuning in if you did. Yeah, um, let's end this shit, everyone. Let's do it.